part one, what is compost and why should we do it? What are its benefits? So composting is a living soil amendment. It's not soil. It's a soil enhancer and it's full of stable plant available nutrients and it's rich in what we call organic matter. I like to call it black gold. Composting is a biological process and if we control certain conditions, it's gonna, the materials are gonna decompose quicker. So as this image on the right shows, we're taking food waste mixed with let's say yard trimmings and we do that in the right recipe and we produce that black gold and we are helping to build healthy soils which is this thin layer of skin around the earth which is the source of all our of, source of a lot of life on earth of course the oceans have a lot of life too um, and it is really all about the soil because at the end of the process you are producing that that soil amendment and there are so many soil benefits this is a poster we created that kind of go, you can download it on our website. We'll share the link. It And it kind of goes through so many of the soil benefits. You have soil, comp when you add compost to soil, you're improving soil tilth and fertility. You're helping to suppress plant diseases. You're stimulating root growth. You're improving what we call cation exchange capacity, which is the ability of soil to retain nutrients. You're helping soil, uh, retain water. When you add compost to soil, it helps um, the water holding capacity of that soil. Compost helps enhance soil structure. It supports soil biology. And I think we're going to find soon that we're so good at removing our fall leaves and yard trimmings from our home properties that our backyards are starved of organic matter. Why do we think the trees uh, drop their leaves? It's because, and then they drop and they break down to to provide those nutrients back to the tree. So we can be building this healthy soil right in our own neighborhoods, in our own backyards. Another driver for composting, of course, is to reduce your trash. On average, in the United States, about half of what we put out at the curb each week is readily compostable. And of that, 21% is food scraps alone. If you're concerned about the climate, composting is a win-win activity that virtually everyone can do. This is another infographic we produced on the compost climate connections. And I know this infographic is too hard to read, so I kind of took screenshots of parts of it. But first, um, compost helps avoid the methane and greenhouse gas emissions that comes from when we throw our food scraps in landfills. Um, Landfills are one of the biggest sources of methane emissions. It's a, a methane is a highly potent greenhouse gas. It's 84 times more potent in its glo global warming potential than carbon dioxide. In a lot of our communities, our trash ends up at waste incinerators. I have fought my whole professional career <laughs> against the building of trash incinerators and just want to note they're falsely labeled as waste to energy facilities, but they're really wasting resources. They destroy resources and they also produce climate and other pollutants. I talked about the benefits of soil, um, but when it comes to climate, there are many. It, as I mentioned, the water holding capacity, let's just take that example, that really is increasing climate resiliency because it's increasing soil resiliency to extreme heat and flooding. And when you add compost to soil, there's humic acids in the soil that kind of act as a glue, helping to aggregate those soil particles and keeping them together. So adding compost to soil helps prevent soil erosion and runoff. So we're helping to protect um, our watersheds. You can also offset um, fossil fuel based fertilizers, which have a huge climate footprint when you're using compost. So there are many climate benefits. Uh, to using compost um, and enhancing soil is one. The other, I think, which is often overlooked is when added to soil, compost helps it act as a carbon sink, storing carbon in the soil, just like we think of trees as being a carbon sink. So that's a really in, um, important uh, benefit of composting. And then a lot of our work at the Institute for Local Self-Reliance is documenting the benefits of composting to build community resiliency. Composting creates many more jobs than landfilling or burning trash. And when you're making that final product and you're using it for rooftop 
um, gardens or bioswales or rain gardens, you're creating even more jobs in that process. So when you think about where you can send your food scraps, you, we have the option of relying on incineration shown. This is the, stat, the smokestack for the Baltimore incinerator on the top left versus landfills, which are the predominant method in, this, in the United States. Or we could producing, be producing this black gold and putting it back in our soils to grow food, which makes sense to you. I hope you all agree with me. And then I'm just gonna wrap up this part um, by just sharing that one of the beauties of composting is that there's no one way to do it. It can be large scale, small scale, and literally everything in between. This facility in the top left handles 30,000 tons per year of food scraps. Um, the one below it on the left is a um, county backyard composting facility. Uh, that um, just handles yard trimmings, not food waste, but it's pretty large scale. Um, we've got the home composting. That's me with one of my home composters in, in the center top, but below that is a farm scale operation. Uh, we've got at least one question for how do we, how do, we do this on a um, farm scale where there's lots of examples for farming on a small scale, but today's um, talk is really focused on home composting. And I'll just share, before I jump to home composting, I just want to say a word about community composting. First, what is it? It's the not so radical idea that compost is used within the same community when the material is generated and the community participates in some way. And there are so many ways to do community composting. There's these in vessel kind of rotating tumblers you're seeing here of different sizes, but there's also open windrow piles. There's more farm scale sizes. And there's many examples, and we have lots of resources on community composting if you go to our website. But today we're focusing on home composting. If you Google home composting bins, you will probably be overwhelmed with all the options. But these are the basic six, six types. And I'll talk more about these in part three when we talk about getting started and setting up your system. But just know like the top middle image shown here is a compost system made from repurposed wooden pallets. You can build your own system. There's many designs available online, but you can also just buy a system and order it from your local hardware store. You can get these stationary systems shown here on the top right or tumblers, both in single chamber and dual chamber. And the prices vary depending on what they're made out of, where they're made, and um, how durable they are. So do read the reviews, and we will talk more about those in part three. We'll also talk later about worm composting, but let me just, and I'll be introducing the basics of worm composting, also called vermicomposting in part six. But for now, just know that vermicomposting is a very different process than hot composting. There's different microorganisms that thrive, Vermicomposting is faster, but it's more limited in the materials you can compost. Worms don't like onions, for, interest, for, in, for instance. They don't like citrus so much, and you don't want your bin to get hot. But it might be a good option if you're in an apartment or you don't have a big yard or you have a small yard. So you have options. 